The Boston Globe called him the world's leading environmentalist. He's a climate activist, educator, author. He wrote The End of Nature, the book about climate change for the general public almost 24 years ago and became an activist in 2006 when his walk across Vermont became the largest demonstration to date against climate change. Then he helped organize Step It Up in 2007 and spurred 1,400 global warming demonstrations in the U.S. He formed 350.org in 2008 and helped to mobilize over 5,200 actions in 181 countries in 2009. Amazing. And then the largest rally on climate by far when 50,000 people jammed the mall in Washington, D.C. for the Forward on Climate rally in February of this year. Bill McKibben and his wife Sue Halpern drove from Vermont to be with us today. Everybody, Bill McKibben. So much. You know, um, for me, one of the things that's most fun about about this is that I got to come with Sue, my wife, who's right over here. Um, and and we'd never been. I'd been to Traverse City before, but I'd never come down from the north. Oh, I'd always heard about these straits and about Mackinac Island and this long bridge, and so it was so much fun to drive down here and to, to see the water. And it was, the startling thing was how incredibly blue it was. It felt like we'd come to the Caribbean almost, you know. It was just astonishing. And then to learn, and then to learn that there are uh, 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 big pipelines, right, just because that was the cheapest way to go would be to stick them under the lake. I mean, uh, cheapest way to go for Enbridge, but um, think about what would, Think about what would happen uh, to the economy of this whole region if one of those sprung a leak. Um, um, oddly enough, most people don't want to go vacation in an oil slick, you know. Um, and, and think of the damage, and think of the damage to everything else around us. And so it's really good that you and, and, and to listen to Beth provide the facts and figures about what's going on here. It is really, really good. Um, that y'all are about this. And even better for, for us that it's the very first part of what we're calling summer heat all across the, the country. Sue and I are headed for Oregon tomorrow and then on to Utah a couple of days after that, and then Boston and Maine and Ohio and DC and Texas and on and on and on. These are the, uh, the next 10 or 12 days are statistically the hottest days of the summer every year, uh, if you average it out. And so we're committed to making them politically the hottest days of the year, too. You know? Because, because, because here's the thing. If you guys are taking on these bad pipelines here, those pipelines are all connected to things. And that means y'all are connected to things. And some of the things that are connected to these pipelines are really bad. I was up last week in Alberta, uh, in the tar sands country, with our, um, with our friends and allies in the First Nations up in Canada. Uh, 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 the people who are um, standing, who have stood up the longest and most effectively on these issues, and who now, with Idle No More, are really beginning to make voices heard in the most powerful way. And we were up there for three days up in the tar sands country, and I'd never been up there before to see what it, I'd seen pictures of it, but when you get up there, it's unbelievable. They've taken an area of boreal forest the size of, I think about Scotland or something, and they've just, turned it upside down and so far they've only gotten out three percent of the oil that's up there you know um but it's unbelievable i think the technical name for what it looks like up there the technical name would be mordor um it's beyond belief so you're connected to that and to that kind of horrible damage um and you're connected of course we're all connected to the damage at the other end of the pipe because when this stuff doesn't spill, 
when it makes its way down these pipes and into refineries and gets turned into gasoline and gets burned, then it spills into the atmosphere. That happens every single day. We've spilled so much carbon into the atmosphere in the last 200 years that we've raised the temperature of the Earth. We have trapped so much carbon that we're now, we've raised the temperature about one degree. That's the equivalent in energy terms of 400,000 Hiroshima-sized explosions every single day. That's how much extra energy we trap. And if you want to know how much that is, look at the Arctic. 80% of the summer ice in the Arctic that was there 40 years ago is gone now. We've taken one of the biggest physical features on Earth and we have broken it. If you want to know how much carbon that is, go stick a strip of pH paper in the ocean because it comes out a different color than it came out 40 years ago. The ocean is 30% more acidic than it was and it's making life impossible for those creatures at the bottom of the marine food chain. If you want to know how much extra energy that is, just look around the planet. Warm air holds more water vapor than cold air. That means that we've raised the temperature one degree and the atmosphere is about 5% wetter on average than it used to be. That's why we see such crazy weather all the time. That's why we see floods constantly, week after week, all in the last few weeks, all across Central Europe. The Danube flooded like it had never flooded before. Then in northern India, they had monsoon rains weeks early on a scale they'd never had before. They think 10,000 people are dead in the floods in Uttarakhand. Then it was Calgary and Alberta. Ironically enough, the corporate headquarters of all the tar sands companies were flooded, uh, flooded out. Then it was Toronto, Ontario. Yeah, but the problem was it didn't just hit them, you know. It hit all kinds of people and creatures all over. It was Toronto four or five days ago, the biggest rainstorm in its history. And the whole someplace now all over the world, this kind of imbalance every single day. So this is all connected into that. If we're not able to slow down this move toward things like tar sands, then the scientists tell us that one degree will be four or five degrees before younger people in this crowd, before Jane or before Chase or Brianna or the people who are doing so much work to me, before they're old people, um, um, the temperature will be, and things will be completely out of control.